In this video we're going to take a look at the newly released responder machine from tier 1 of the Hack the Box starting point track. I'm already connected to the VPN and I've booted up the machine but I haven't done anything else yet so let's take a look at the first question. How many TCP ports are open on the machine? So there's a hint at what we need to do first of all which is run a port scan. Normally I would use mass scan to check all of the open TCP and UDP ports because it's quite fast at doing that. And you'll see me doing that on some of these videos if you stick with the series. In this case I'm not going to do that. Let's have a look. We can have a look at nmap-h to get up the help menu and get a lot of different information about the options here. We can also have a look at the man page and get a lot more detailed information or we can use tldr to get some example commands and this will give you some commands that you can quite easily just copy and paste. Somebody also recommended a tool called Navi to me recently which you can open up with the Control and G shortcut on the keyboard and we can actually specify in here what we want to do. So in this case nmap I'm going to do the TCP SYN scan because the standard scan didn't bring all the ports up for me so I'm just going to hit enter on this one. It asks what IP or range we want to scan so let's grab the IP address. Let's paste that in there. And then it basically gives us everything we need for the command. So I'm going to take some of this out. I'm actually going to go and add the service enumeration and default scripts. It didn't need this either. Oh, we also need pseudo privileges. So let's add that. And let's leave that to run. While that's running, let's go and see if we've got any web service. So we can just go and open this up in a browser. We try to connect to the service and it's redirected to this host name. You'll note on some of these videos what I often do is go and add the IP address to the host file and just take the name of the machine. So in this case it would be responder.hackthebox. If I'd done that in this case we would run into some problems because it's actually redirecting to unica.hackthebox. So let's go and add that to the host file etc hosts. Let us paste in that domain let's grab the IP address that we've been assigned and this is going to route any request to this domain to this IP address vice versa and we'll close that down we'll now try to reload that page and see what we get and it seems to be loading up we could have a browse around here and try and get an idea what kind of services we've got we could also use this Wappalizer to see what we've got so we've got an Apache web server it's running PHP we can also see it's Windows as well. So we might want to go and have a look for PHP files. We can do that with GoBuster. So GoBuster-H, we can see that we want to use the directory mode. I've got an alias for this, which you've probably seen me use before, but let me just grab it out in case you haven't. So from our bash aliases, we want to grab, let me just grab GoBuster. And you can see that this is just running the directory mode with the standard word list and taking in the URL so we'll do go busters let me oh let me grab the domain name and let's provide that with PHP we might want to do HTML or TXT or something as well but that's fine I'll just leave that as it is we could also run Nikto pass in the host name and again we can see the version of PHP that we've got running see what headers we've got this might identify some vulnerabilities as well let's see is our nmap scan is still running so while we're waiting we might want to go and check out some more of these links maybe have a look at the source code on the site as well see is there any interesting comments we could have a look at whatever files have been returned here so are there any interesting directories or files we might want to check out you can see a lot of these are coming back with 403 errors so we wouldn't actually be able to load them. Index.php is the only one we're getting the 200 OK on. Let's have a look at nmap. That's still running OK. So the first thing we need is to identify how many TCP ports are open on the machine. So let's wait for nmap to complete and then I'll come back. So that took another minute or two to complete. I should have actually run it with the verbose flag and then we would have seen the open ports as it was running because it'll first check for the open ports and then it'll do the service enumeration and the default scripts afterwards. So we could have saved a little bit of time, but we've got our three open TCP ports, port 80, our HTTP service, 5985 and 7680. 
Let me take a copy of this. This port comes up quite a lot on Windows machines. Let's go and answer this question. So there's three TCP ports open. Let's also go and Google this, port 5985. And if we Google that, I was expecting Hattricks to come up pretty quickly, but it didn't. All right. We'll Google that with Hattricks and we'll see here, pen testing WinRM. So we can see here that WinRM or Windows Remote Management is a Microsoft protocol that allows remote management of Windows machines of a HTTPS. If it's enabled a machine, it's trivial to remotely administer the machine from PowerShell. In fact, you can just drop into a remote PowerShell session on the machine if you're using SSH. The easiest way is to see if these ports are open. So we do have one of those ports open. There's also a tool that we can use called Evil WinRM. I'm not sure if that's mentioned in here. Let me search for Evil. Yeah. So you can install Evil WinRM with gem install Evil WinRM. And we can use that to connect this port once you've got a username and a password. You can also pass the hash as well, so you can provide a hash instead of a password if you're not able to crack the hash, for example. Okay, that's fine. Let's go back anyway. Let's see what else we've got to do here. So, when visiting the web service using the IP address, what was the domain that we're redirected to? So, that was what we had to set up here this Unica dot hack the box. Let's paste that in. What scripting language is being used? We know that as well because we had a look with Wappalizer, so we saw that programming languages, we've got this PHP, so we'll submit that here as well. We also used GoBuster to search for PHP files, directory busting, and this showed PHP here as well for the server type in Nikto. Let's close these down for now. And next we're asked, what is the name of the URL parameter which is used to load different language versions on the web page? So we'll go to the web page, we can see our languages over here, we can swap between English, French and German. So let's change it to German and we can see that the parameter is page. So this is the get parameter and we can supply the language as the value. Uh, let me close that down, let's submit that. Which of the following values for the page parameter would be an example of exploiting a local file inclusion vulnerability? So this is funny, it's actually it's given us some different examples asking us a question, but it's quite clear from the answer field what the right answer is. But let's look through it anyway. So local file inclusion would be including a local file in the system that we shouldn't be able to access. This french.html we can access, that's supposed to be accessed, so we can just click that we are including a local file, but we're not exploiting any vulnerability. This is using a, an external IP address, so this could be a remote file inclusion. And it's also using a syntax like you would see with SMB or something. And then we have some directory traversal going to the host file, so including a file which shouldn't be accessible. And then we've got one just mimikatz.exe, so just a binary. So it's going to be this one. Actually, what we would probably do as well is go and have a look for an LFI list. So let's search LFI Windows, and we can probably get a list of some file names to brute force. Let me, word list. So here's one, for example, we could, it says intruder there, so we could use burp intruder, we could use some other kind of fuzzing tool, ffuf for something like that. I basically just pass in this list and try and see what comes back. So what files are on the system and accessible. We could also get an idea what's there based on the server. So we saw that it was an Apache server. So maybe we'd have a look in here and see what is the format for the Apache. So you can see here Apache logs. So you might want to take that. You can also add some of the directory traversal stuff into the into this as well. That won't always be needed. Let's actually, let's try this out. So at the moment it's taking this french.html. Let's take a copy of this. We want to use this one because this is a file. You want to try and find a file that's going to be there on the system. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Okay. Let's do that again. Just make sure it has the HTTP at the beginning so that doesn't happen. And you can see that works. We could also try and take out this directory traversal and C, can we just provide C? 
that also works. So in some cases, let me try and let's try and access something that is maybe not available. Let me try the Apache. I can't even remember what it was now. Apache log or Apache dot log or something. So in this case, we get an error. So this could also give us an idea. In some cases, you might not be able to provide the actual file path like this. You might need to traverse the directory back to the root. So in our case, for example, we can see that we can see what it's trying to call here. So we might need to go back one directory, two directories to get back to the C directory. In that case, we know we'd need to do something like dot dot slash dot dot slash. We could also potentially use this to read PHP files. So typically the PHP file, we shouldn't be able to read the code because it's on the server side. So we can't just right click and view source and access that. But let's try and see if we can use a filter. So if we just load that, it's going to be nothing of interest. Let's, I shouldn't have closed down hack tricks. Let's get the file inclusion cheat sheet here. And what I'm looking for is one of these filters. So you can see here, PHP filter. There's a few different options. We can use ROT13 or we can use Base64 or something to basically encode the code that's in that file. So let me provide that. There we have the Base64 encoded code. So let's go and do echo, paste that in, and then send that to Base64-D. And here we can actually see the PHP code. So we might want to try and do that if there's any other interesting files here. Maybe there's a database file or some kind of PHP file with credentials in it. We might also want to test for remote file inclusion as well. Let's actually go back and see what it's asking us to do. I don't want to skip too far ahead. Which of the following values for the page parameter would be an example of exploiting a remote file inclusion vulnerability? So that would be this one. So this is using the 10.10.14 .10 IP address, which is the same IP address as we should have for our VPN. I've got 0.14.18. So this is trying to access a file from our system. Let me submit that. Let's go back and try this. Let's put in the same thing. Mine was 0.18. 18 let me go and set up a web server on port 80 that s is just a sudo I've just got a shortcut set up so I don't have to type in the full sudo all the time this is gonna complain because I don't have HTTP there notice that so let's go back let me do that again HTTP I know you can set it so it doesn't do that but sometimes I want to just search through the search bar so I don't bother. Uh, but we don't get any requests back here anyway. We're asked next then what does NTLM stand for? So we can just Google this. It is the new technology land manager. NTLM acronym. Or you can just Google the name. It should come up here somewhere in the search engine. Yeah, NT Windows new technology LAN local area network manager. Okay, so new technology LAN manager and now we're getting on to the goal of the box or well to the topic of the box which is the responder utility which flag do we use in the responder utility to specify the network interface so we can go and do responder dash h you can use TLDR if there is an index for this one as well, which just gives you the examples from the man page, but I don't think there is actually one for this. But we can see that it takes dash I as the adapter. In our case, the adapter will be not ETH0, but the TUN0, because that's where our VPN is connected. So let's provide dash I. And let's also go and have a look and see what Responder is all about. So I'll leave a link to this article in the description along with some others about Responder and LFI and whatever we go through in this video. But as we can see here, Responder is a standard go-to tool in a penetration tester's toolbox. 
It's likely one of the first tools run when simulating an attacker who's trying to steal password hashes and gain a foothold into the network. After capturing a hash, most testers assume that only path forward is cracking the captured password hashes. However, if the hashes prove uncrackable, Responder can be used with its less well-known sidekick, multi-relay, to automatically relay the authentication requests. We're not going to be doing that, but that's worth bearing in mind. You can follow this article and use multi-relay to relay hashes. So how does Responder work? Well, I'll simplify and summarize this a little bit, but essentially it's telling us that when Windows machines are unable to resolve host names through their DNS or local host file, like we set up at the beginning of this video where we linked the IP address to the host name, well, if it can't resolve it, it'll essentially broadcast out to the network and ask if there are any other systems that can resolve that address or that host name. And that's where Responder is going to come in. So Responder is going to respond and say, we're the system that you're looking for. And essentially, the system is going to try to authenticate with us and send over the NTLM password hash. OK, so the next question is asking us to crack the hash. It's asking what tool can we use? The tool is often referred to as John. What's the full name? And it's John the Ripper. So let's submit that and let's go and get the hash. So we need to run Responder. Remember this is ton zero. We need to do that with root privileges, so sudo that as well. And you can actually see that this will set up a lot of different servers. It's going to try a range of different servers, only some of them might be accessible due to permissions and stuff on the victim. And that's it. We've got our IP address. I'm going to take a copy of this. In fact, I think we've already got it in there still. Let's go back over here. Yeah, all right. So we've got that. It's trying to request some file. Let's try and run it. Let's go back. And there's our hash coming through. So we can take a copy of this. We can create a file called hash. I'm going to paste that in there. And let's use John the Ripper and provide a word list. I'm going to put a space here because I want to be able to use autocomplete and use the rocky password list. We'll take in a hash and I'm going to go back and take the space out. It's a little bit quicker. And very, very quickly we crack the hash which was badminton. So there we go. We've now got a password to log in with. Let's go and answer our question. And we've been asked then what is the Windows service? So we looked at that earlier. It was 5985. And that's that service that you're going to be able to connect to using evil WinRM. It's asking us for the root flag, so that's the last thing we need to do. Let's connect to it. Let's take, let's do evil WinRM-H and we can see it wants an IP address from us, it wants a user and we want to provide the password as well, so let's go and grab that IP, although we could just provide the host name, but I can't remember what that is either. Off the top of my head, let's provide evil WinRM the IP address, the user was administrator, where is it, there it is, administrator, and the password was badminton. We'll run that, and that should connect us, and we can use ls and stuff here as well, as well as using the Windows alternatives, we're basically we're connected to a PowerShell, so let's go back, see what we've got here, we can have a look around for this flag. Do we get autocomplete here? We don't. Okay. And let's check this mic directory. We've got a flag.txt. We print that out and we've got our flag. So let's submit that. And that's the responder machine completed. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.